What's up guys, my name is Technova here for Troubleshoot and today I'll be taking you through installing a bucket for 1.15 and hosting your own server as well as adding plugins to it. This tutorial covers everything from setting up the server, downloading it to even port forwarding to let your friends join and installing your first plugin. So to begin, you'll need Craft Bucket itself. Head across to the first link in the description down below, which will take you to the Craft Bucket download page. All you need to do is simply find 1.15, release date Tuesday, December 10th, and hit the big download button next to it. Then it'll say the file you're about to download over there. And if it doesn't automatically start, just click the name. Then all we have to do is wait for it to download. While that's doing its thing, I'll create a new folder on my desktop, and I'll just call it a Bucket 1.15, and I'll open it up. Then I'll hit keep and I'll drag and drop the jar that we just downloaded into this folder. After it's done, you can rename it to anything you want, such as craft bucket 1.15.jar, or you could even name it just bucket, which is what I'll do here. So bucket.jar. If you don't see .jar after it, at the very top, go to view, and then make sure file name extensions is checked. It needs to be bucket.jar or something.jar. Just remember what you call it here. Then I'll right click, new text document, and make sure that you see .txt at the end. If you don't, go and make sure that the file name extensions is checked and come back to rename it. I'll name it start.bat. You can call it anything as long as it's .bat. Hit enter and it'll say, do you want to rename it? Hit yes. Right click, edit. That'll open it with notepad. And all you need to do from here is simply copy and paste this line from the description down below. Java xmx2048 xms2048 jar bucket.jar no gui. Then on the next line, we'll just make sure to write pause and we'll save it as such. The next step is finding out how much RAM you want to give the server. The more RAM you give to the server, the better the performance will be and you can fit more players on it. All you need to do is right click your start bar and click task manager. Once inside of task manager, go across to performance and click to memory. Then in the very top right, you'll see how much RAM you have in total. And looking down here where it says available, you'll see a number below it. Mine's 47 gigabytes, but of course yours will probably be much less, around about 4, 3, 6, etc, etc. Now you don't want to give Minecraft all of it, you still need some for other programs and Windows. So I'd say give it about 50%, or maybe as much as you can but just make sure you have some leftover for Minecraft itself and the rest of your PC. So of course, because I have quite a bit of RAM, I'm gonna go ahead and change it from 2048M, which is two gigabytes, to maybe 4096, which is four gigabytes. Now, of course, if you don't want to multiply 1024 by the amount of gigabytes you wanna give it, you can simply get rid of this whole big number and the M, and replace it with four capital G, which means that we're giving it four gigabytes. It's the exact same thing as saying 4096 M, but four G is just a lot easier to write. XMS right next to it, you can leave as is, unless you're gonna give it less than two gigs of RAM. If so, you can change it to 1024, which is one gig, or however much you're gonna give to it. Otherwise, I'd leave it as is. XMS you can ignore because it's the starting amount of RAM that the server has. XMX is the maximum, and that's the only thing you need to change here. Then just make sure that where it says bucket.jar, it matches the file name of the .jar in the same folder. So if you call it craftbucket.jar, simply change this to craftbucket.jar and save it. Then you can close it and open start.bat. You should see something like this, and it says failed to load ULA, etc., etc and it'll say press any key to continue. Press any key, and you'll see a bunch of new files here. If you don't, then make sure that you have Java installed and up to date. To do that, head to the second link in the description down below, hit accept license agreement, and download either the Windows 86 offline if you're on 32-bit, or the Windows 64 one over here if you're on 64-bit, just by clicking the link over there. Once you have it installed and you run the batch file again, if you don't see these new files, then you may have an issue with your jar files in Windows. All you need to do is head across to the third link in the description down below, which will take you to a video on fixing that, which I'll release probably in a few hours. Once you're done with that and you've run server.bat, you should have all of these files over here. Simply open up eula.txt and at the very end where it says eula equals false, change that to equals true. Save it and close it. Then inside of server.properties, you can change everything about your server. So in here you can enable or disable PVP by changing true to false, spawn monsters, you can set it to hardcore, enable command blocks, change the maximum amount of players that can join the server, and down here you can even change the server port. 
I'd recommend leaving it as 25565 unless you're hosting more than one Minecraft server on your same PC or the network. Then down at the very bottom, you can change MOTD to say whatever you want. So I'll call it troubleshoot bucket 1.15. Once you've changed your settings to how you like it, hit Control S to save and close it. Then the next time you run start.bat, the server should load and then start as expected. You'll see a bunch more files appear, logs, plugin, and world. World is where the actual map files are saved, world nether, world the end, as are quite self-explanatory, but plugins is the special folder that comes with bucket. Inside of here is where you'll be dropping all of your, you guessed it, plugins. But before we get to installing plugins, let's make sure that we can join the server and then let's prepare it for friends to join as well. So to join a bucket server, all you need is Minecraft 1.15. You don't need anything special. Head across to multiplayer, hit add server. You can call it whatever you want, but under server address, either enter local host one word or enter 127.0.0.1. This will join you to your own server locally. And this is only for you if you're running the server on your same computer that you're playing Minecraft on. If you want other people to join on the same local network, say a computer next to you, then all you need to do is hold start and press R. Type in CMD, hit enter, and a new command prompt window will pop up. Type in IP config, hit enter, and look for the way that you're connected to the internet. I'm connected via cable, so I looked for ethernet adapter. Then look for IPv4 address, and you'll see it right next to it. Mine's 192.168.1.20. So if a computer next to me wanted to connect, they'd type in 192.168.1.20. And of course, if you'd like friends over the internet to join, you'll have to go to Google, type in what is my IP, and you should see it appear right up here. If it doesn't appear in this nice little block, head across to one of the links, such as this one over here, and you'll see it in nice big text. Of course, if a friend tries to connect to this address, nothing will happen unless you've port forwarded and you've allowed the Minecraft server through your Windows or antivirus's firewall. Don't worry if you gave your address to someone else to come and play and they aren't able to connect, then you just need to make sure that Minecraft is actually allowed through your firewall and it's port forwarded to your computer. How exactly do we do that? Well, let's start with the Windows firewall. Of course, if you have an antivirus or another firewall piece of software, make sure to follow along inside of that program instead. So simply hit start and type in firewall, then click on Windows Defender Firewall, advanced settings on the left hand side, and then you see this window over here. In the top left, hit inbound rules, and then in the top right, hit new rule. Then we'll go port, next, TCP, Inside of this little box, we'll type 25565. And of course, if you change the server port earlier, you'll be changing this number here. However, because I left mine as 25565, that's what I'm entering here. Next, allow, next, next, and I'll call it MC for Minecraft. Hit finish, and then we'll go ahead and do that again. So new rule, port, next. This time we're selecting UDP. We'll paste in the port, next, allow, next, next, MC. Finish. Then in the top left, go to outbound rules, new rule, port, next, TCP 25565, next, allow, next, next, MC. Finish. New rule, port, next, UDP 25565, next, allow, next, next, MC. Finish. Now we're done allowing it through our Windows firewall. Assuming you have an antivirus or firewall software, make sure you do it there as well. At this point, someone on your local network is able to connect to you using that local IP we found earlier. For me, it was 192.168.1.20. But if you'd like people outside of your home connection to connect to your server, you need to port forward. Now, everyone's router is completely different, so I can't show you a way that works for all of them. I have, however, created this very basic sample web page over here, and your router will look somewhat like this. You'll find something like external and internal port, protocol, and something asking for your local IP. In the external, simply enter 25565, and if there's two blocks, simply add it to both of them. Internal port is the same, and protocol will be TCP and UDP. If you don't have this option, make sure you add one for TCP and one for UDP separately. But because I have both of them, I'll click that last option. Then where it says local IP, it may have some of it filled in as such, 192.168.1, or you may have to type in all of this. I just have to enter 20, that's about it. 
Then I make sure enabled is checked if that exists for you and hit save or add new. Done. Now we've successfully port forwarded Minecraft to our local PC. If someone were to type in your external IP address that you found on Google, hit done, they'll be able to join your server. However, because this is a random number I've entered, I'm going to go ahead and enter local host because I'm joining it on the same computer that I'm hosting the server on. I'll hit done. And in a couple of seconds, you'll see it pops up zero out of 20 with the MOTD over here. Troubleshoot bucket 1.15. If I click on the server, click join server, you'll see on the left hand side that we successfully joined the server and we're able to move around. Of course, if you'd like to give yourself OP, simply tab into the server and type in OP space your username, mine's techno. Enter. And now you can see made techno a server operator. From here, I can game mode creative, enter. And now we can fly. We have OP. Now, of course, this is basically a vanilla server at this point with no mods. How exactly do we add mods? Well, it's pretty simple. In the description down below, there's a link to this page over here. Simply find a plugin that you want. I'll download World Edit. So I'll click on the plugin itself and then I'll hit download latest file in the top right. We'll hit keep. All you have to do then is head back to the service folder, open up plugins, drag and drop it out into that folder. And from here, you'll need to go ahead and save the server and close it. Now, of course, if you make progress and you hit this X button over here to close it, the server will close without saving and you'll lose your progress. To save your progress, tab into the server itself and type in save hyphen all, enter, and it'll save the map. All you need to do is type in stop and hit enter. The server will then save and close. Press any key and we'll head back out of the plugins folder and we'll run start.bat again. As the server is loading, you'll see some things relating to the plugins we just installed, one of them being a world edit. If I drag the server to the side, rejoin the Minecraft server, I'm able to do some commands like slash slash wand, and I'm given a wooden wand. From there, I can simply left click, right click, and I can use the plugin with slash slash set, say glowstone. Done. We have the plugin installed and working. Everything is completely set up and ready for use. Of course, I won't be getting into permissions or anything like that, but if you're interested in other mods, then I might be covering them in future videos. If there's any more information that needs to be added to this tutorial, it'll be in the description and the comments down below. Anyways, that's about it. That has been the crash course on setting up your own bucket server and installing your first plugin. My name is Techno here for Troubleshoot. I hope this video helped you and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.